What's up everyone, this is Cyberknight 8610 and today we have a special video and that's we're going to talk about Return of the Duelist. This of course is the set that's already been out in Japan and we'll get it in August of course of this year for us in the TCG or in you know English versions of it. Of course, as some people may not know, uh, that we get exclusive cards from these sets. Like always, we get 10 cards that are TCG exclusives. And we also get uh, some OCG imports or OCG exclusives, whatever you prefer to call them. We get 10 of each of these. So I'm not really talking about these cards in this video because we don't know all of them yet. So yeah, this is just the main set of the cards that we're going to be talking about. And if, they're, if this set is even worth getting. Uh, we only have heard, I think, of four of the exclusive cards so far, and I must say I'm excited about them, but like I said, we'll have separate videos talking about those, and uh, more in depth later on. But for now, we're just talking about the main set itself, and the cards that we know 100% that we're already getting. So yeah, let's get started on this, and let's see if Return of the List is one of the best sets of Yu-Gi-Oh! First off, let's talk about the Heroics real quick. As you can see, of course, we have Heroic Champion Excalibur, the main card of the set, so you figure uh, Heroics are probably going to be the main archetype of this set. And in some ways, they're really uh, talked about, and they have a lot of support, of course, in this set. And of course, in future uh, sets, we're going to see a lot of support for them, which is really awesome. They're a really fun archetype, and uh, they really kind of work where they boost each other up, they protect each other and stuff, where they can really gain high attack points. It's kind of their basic goal, which is really nice. Heroic Champion is going to be easy for us to get, of course, because we're going to get in the 10, so people don't worry if you're really dying for this card. It's a card that requires two warrior-type monsters to exceed summon into it. You get rid of both the materials to make it double in its attack and defense until your opponent's uh, next turn, I believe. Yes, yeah, so their next end phase. So it will make it a 4,000 attack monster when you use this effect. It has 2,000 attack, 2,000 defense when it doesn't. It requires, like I said, the two warriors to exceed into it, which is sometimes a problem, but it's going to work great with uh, elemental heroes, six samurais, I mean, just anything that can bring out a level four warrior type monsters easily, this card's going to be evil in, so I cannot wait for it. And of course it works great for heroics. Heroics are an archetype that I don't think are going to be too strong in this set, though, unfortunately. But in the future, it looks like they're going to get some amazing uh, XC support. Or they're getting some really nice XC monsters, besides just Excalibur. And I cannot wait to see what those can all do. But yeah, the Horrocks, they look like they're going to be more of a fun deck, and I can't wait to see them, and I plan to try them out. Now we're going to talk about the Magicals, or Prophecies, I guess, as the name is going to be in the TCG. Not really too keen on the name change, but whatever. Uh, as you can see, I got most of them from my box, so I can show you most of the hollow ones and stuff, too. We don't know all the rarities yet, of course, for the TCG version, but the Magicals, or Prophecies, i got to used to call them that now, are a really interesting art type. They can bring up their levels really nice. They use these spell books. You can see at the top are the different spell books that they can use. And uh, they give them their effects, their powers. They help search through the deck. They're like the whole, they're like the power system of the deck, if you want to call it that. Because they help activate their effects and make them really powerful. Most of the time they get stronger by having these in the graveyard. And they like, a lot of these books can search each other out and power up the monsters themselves, revive the monsters, do a lot of stuff like that. Also, this art type can really bring out some higher rank monsters easily, too, like uh, some uh, rank 7s and stuff, really easy. So number 7, number 11, and of course they get their own rank 7 as well, which is really nice as well. So yeah, I can't wait for these. I think they're going to be a lot of fun to use. They're getting a lot of support in the future, too, which uh, will make them a lot of fun to use. Maybe we can even use them in some of our previous cards as well. I've been saying that uh, I think a uh, bound one might actually be a useful card with these as well. We'll have to see, though. We'll have to see how everything plays out, but uh, maybe don't get rid of your Bound Wand just yet. This card, these uh, whole art types going to be a lot of fun to use, like most of these art types in this set, and I can't wait to see what these can do. It's nice to see some spellcasters in general, and, uh, yeah, easy rank, uh, high rank XC monsters summoning. That just sounds awesome in itself to me. So, yeah, I can't wait to try these out, and I've actually tried them on Dual Network, and they're a lot of fun to use. I really suggest uh, looking into them, especially if you love spellcasters. This is the art type for you to check out. Next, let's talk about some of the out-of-place artifacts, or O-parts, or for the TCG name, I think it's supposed to be called a Konomaly? Chronomaly? Something like that. It sounds like Konami in, in some ways, but yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Hopefully I am, but that's one of the weirdest name changes ever. I really like the out-of-place artifacts name a lot better, or O-parts, or however you really wanted to say it. But yeah, this is another one of those types. It's going to be one of those I don't see getting a whole lot of support in the future. They're getting uh, some cool XCs. I know, like, one of the villains, I believe, supposedly uses them in uh, Zeal. I don't watch a whole lot of Zeal or Zexel, whatever you prefer to call it. Uh, so I'm not really 100% sure on that. Uh, but yeah, it's, it seems like more of a toolbox build thing. They have more of a, a kind of a swarm where they can uh, uh, bring out rank 5s. 
fairly easy, so that's what's kind of neat about them. They're, they're pretty fun to use, but I believe that's all they're really going to be. I mean, you know, sorry to anyone that is, you know, really looking forward to this deck, but I don't see them being one of the competitive ones. You know, maybe they'll surprise me. I really hope they do, too. I hope I'm wrong, because uh, they're really awesome, and I really like the whole idea behind them. Uh, their XCs, however, are actually pretty nice. The XC monsters are pretty powerful. I didn't get the Alien XC one, which is one of the better ones out there. But, yeah, I did get number 33, as you can see right there. And I think these things are going to be pretty useful. You know, we'll see more of them being used in other decks, unfortunately. But yeah, the Oparts or Chronomalies themselves look like they're going to be mainly a for-fun deck, unfortunately. But still not a bad thing. You know, they might not see them in the meta, but you still might enjoy just using them. Next we have Geargus. Yes, this is a really awesome art type. One that's probably going to be the most competitive out of the whole set. Because why? They work great with gadgets. They swarm the field really easy, they work with the whole gadget theme, and of course they kind of look like gadgets. I'm surprised they don't just call them gadgets really in some ways. Uh, yeah, though, they, I didn't get the XC monster, so of course that's the reason I'm not showing it to you yet, which is probably the main one worth talking about. Because of its ability to be so easily XC summoned by these, it's just needing a machine, a level 4 machines to XC summon into it, and where it can search and get them from either the hand, the deck, or graveyard and stuff. You can swarm the field with three of them. It's kind of like the whole, how windups are able to uh, summon Zen Mighty sort of thing. It's kind of how this card works. Uh, so far, I don't know the rarity of it. It hadn't really been confirmed for the TCG, but it looks like it's even going to be a secret rare. So, more than likely, their XC monster is going to be considered the so-called money card of the set, which will end up being a pretty high dollar. I didn't get it, of course, like I said, uh, from my box, but so that, that's what really kind of sucks. But, uh, yeah, it, that kind of shows, too, how it's probably not going to be the easiest one to get out of the whole set, which is really going to be unfortunate, because if you're going to use this, you're going to need three of them. I think it's one of those that you're actually, you know that you're actually going to need three of a certain card in the extra deck. So yeah, that's going to be that card. Uh, these, though, are really interesting. They're a lot of fun to use. I've been using them on Dueling Network a little bit with some gadgets. Uh, and uh, you can swarm the field ridiculously with them. It's it's pretty ridiculous how they all work together. And uh, you can go for even those uh, higher, uh, those uh, rank four monsters that re require uh, more than two materials to AC summon into them, you can go for those easily. So, uh, Shockmaster, that's the reason a lot of people are going after him right now, because he'll go up in price, probably. Uh, Shark Drake, uh, Illuminite, although a lot of people don't look at Illuminite too much, I still really like the card. And, um, Uberboros, whenever that comes out, not too sure when that's supposed to come out, but that's one of the Evil Swarms, or Still Swarms, or whatever they call themselves, Swarms. <laughs> but yeah, uh, really interesting art type. This is going to be the main art type I think most people are going to be looking after, though. So when you go to Sneak Preview, you get some of these, uh, be sure to, you know what you have, because, especially on the their XC monster, that's going to be, I think, the money card of the whole set that a lot of people are going to be going after. Now let's talk about Medulce's. I know a lot of people really like artwork on these, and the artwork's pretty nice on them. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the whole little cutesy thing, but <laughs> a lot of people really enjoy the art. Uh, I'm more of the dragons and knights kind of person, as you have <laughs> probably seen <laughs> on some of the decks that I choose to build. Anyway, though, these are really interesting, though, in themselves. They're really... I like the whole idea behind them, though. Out of the whole creativity thing, this is one of my favorite archetypes of the whole set in terms of creativity because uh, I like how they work where they, you don't want them in your graveyard is basically how the, the whole art type works. You want them to keep going back to the deck and stuff and that's what keeps their effects going. They can swarm the field in a pretty consistent way and uh, they use field spells as well. So you can, you've seen a lot of builds probably recently with like Gear Town, uh, some sort of malefic build I've seen. I've even seen, you know, one of my friends is trying out a zombie kind of variant of it, which is uh, really cool as well. So there's a lot of different builds. You're going to see a lot of builds on these. This is going to be, uh, I don't, think they're going to be too competitive, but I don't know. I kind of wonder if they're going to be the one that's going to surprise us all. Even out of, you know, even though this is the, probably the one I'm kind of the least interested in, me personally, I'm just not really interested in this art type. Uh, but I kind of feel like they're going to be the strongest art type out of all of them in some ways. So yeah, I can't wait to see what this art type is going to do. This is the one I expect will uh, be really interesting. And, yeah, I, I was able to get the Pudding Driss, which is, like, one of the main cards, which is a hollow in, in Japan. So we have no clue on the rarity of it, I don't think, in the English version yet. And, yeah, I can't wait to see what they're going to do, though. I have some, I have kind of a weird feeling that they're going to end up being really competitive. They remind me in some ways of Gladiator Beasts or something, too, which is going to be really interesting in that. So, yeah, can't wait to see what this R-Type is going to do. 
What I really like about Return of the Duelist, personally, is I like how they're really putting a lot of Earth support out there. Sort of like how Phantom Darkness went with a lot of dark support, Light of Destruction, of course, went with light support. This is really putting a lot of emphasis on Earth support in itself, which is really nice. We're getting a lot of cards that remind me of uh, how we got all those dark variant cards in a Phantom of Darkness, but we're getting a lot of Earth-oriented cards this time. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, Dusk Knight right here, where he's, uh, I think he's like Dark Dusk Knight, or I don't know what the name is. I hate to say too many of the names of these cards, because I know, well, we're about to see a lot of name changes. So yeah, uh, he's able, though, basically his effect is like an Armageddon Knight for Earth-type monsters. You flip him up, you get to send Earth-type monsters uh, from the deck to the grave, which is a really nice effect. It can help you search for certain cards you need to get to the grave, so you can either Reborn or, you know, just use other effects to use with them. We also have this other one that looks like a pile of Legos. It's an awesome card, too. I believe it's Block Golem in Japanese. I'm not too sure what the English name is going to be. Who knows what they're going to do on that. Uh, like I said, I hate to say too many names on the cards because you never know when they're going to get the name changes. Uh, but anyway, uh, its effect is really nice because it's able to get uh, monsters from the grave and by tributing itself and uh, getting them to the field really easy for powerful like sea monsters is basically what it's used for. Sorry for a little difference in light to I'm next to a window and it seems like the light's changing the whole time. Uh, anyway though, I use this a lot in the Earth variant deck that I've made, which I'll have it at profile sometime soon, and it really helps out a lot to swarm the field. You can go for a quick sea monster, and it's just really nice how it all works. I believe it has to be rock type monsters summoned by this, but you can still go for your your more generic uh, rank 4s, which is really nice. There's also some other Earth monsters coming out that are worth mentioning, but unfortunately I did not get all those cards so you don't see them. They're basically getting their own uh, Dark Armored Dragon sort of card, where you have to have exactly 5 Earth monsters in the grave. And to use that card, which is really nice, and you can see more of the theme of this deck uh, since that card's coming out, you know. That's why they have their own Armageddon Knight. So for cards like that, if you're missing, like you only have 4 in the grave, well that will help you get your 5th one so you can special summon that guy. So yeah, I can't wait to see what the Earth Monster is going to do. I think we're going to see lots of uh, new power for rock stun decks. Uh, this has really helped out me for my Kwaki Mero deck that I've made, where it uses a lot of uh, Earth and Warrior engines, so I'm able to bring out even Excalibur, uh, Blade Armor Ninja, and even go for that uh, newer Earth Monsters out there. So yeah, I can't wait to see what this is going to actually do for the meta, and it's probably one of the things I'm most excited about personally of this whole set, is that all the new Earth support. Now let's just talk about a few random cards I just kind of want to talk about real quick. Because like with anything, you know, it seems like everyone just looks at the art tops of any set and they don't really pay attention to any of the other random stuff. There's a lot of good random stuff coming out there. Like a Galaxy Queen's Light, which I'm not too sure, you know, like I said, name changes. So forgive me if the name changes if you watch this video later. Uh, but that's going to make it where it's going to be a lot easier to bring uh, higher ranked monsters to the field. It's right here in case you don't know which card it is. And uh, it has to be a, it brings monsters to level 7 really easy or higher, you know, it just depends what you have on the field already. It can bring up those monsters. So you can go for your higher rank monsters really easy, can work great with magicals slash prophecies and uh, some other different variant decks which could be fun to use. So I can't wait to see what that's going to do. I make number 7 and 11 worth more, so maybe go ahead and get a, pick up a few of those before this card comes out. They might see a rise in value. We're also getting another rank 6, you know, it's nice to see, you know, remember to look at all the exceeds from this set, because you never know, there's always that lone wolf kind of exceed that's going to end up, people are going to be looking back on them and be like, oh, I should have got that when it was cheap. So yeah, be sure to check all these out, because this is going to be the first uh, cheap rank 6 coming out, I believe, I believe it's going to have a cheaper rarity. It was only a rare in the, in the OCG version of the pack. I'm assuming it's going to be the same, because... Uh, it's it's an alright one. It's not as good as Street Bouncer, but it's still uh, really nice to see a cheaper version. And of course we have Snow Sniper. I wonder how they're going to censor that card, right? A uh, really great card. It kind of reminds me of Toy Magician. How it goes to spell in Trap Card Zone. It gets destroyed. It can destroy a monster then, or a card, I believe. And uh, then it can special summon itself. Being a warrior level 4, great way to bring out Blade Armor or uh, Excalibur. So yeah, that's why I really enjoy that card, and it's a lot of fun to use. Another card that's great for the Earth support kind of thing coming down. So uh, yeah, can't wait for that. I really think Snow Sniper is going to be an awesome card. It's a common OCG set. I have the bad feeling, though, that it's going to be a uh, much higher rarity in the TCG version and not easy to get. I really hope I'm wrong on that, though, because I really want a playset of this card. So yeah, that is our basic quick summary of uh, Return of the Duelist. What do I think about this set? I think it's going to be one of the best sets of Zeal or Zexel, whatever you prefer to call it. And it's it's kind of our uh, Duelist revolution, sort of, for uh, for Zeal, in my opinion, because it has lots of great tech cards, I believe, and and some pretty cool archetypes that are going to see that are going to have a pretty good future, I believe, like Madolche's. 
uh, the prophecies slash magicals or heroics, those are all going to have a, a good future. And of course, we're getting the gear goes. I don't know if they get. I don't think, or I haven't heard of any future support for them. But they pretty much have all they need with already having gadgets out. So they're going to be a force to be reckoned with as well. And there's going to be a lot of great tech cards out of this set. So in my opinion, this is one of the better sets out there. Uh, I think it's going to be the one of the sets that if you you know really want to get a bunch of cards, you know, this is a set that's going to have all the trade bait, is what I'm basically trying to say, because it has a lot of cards I think a lot of people are going to, you know, really need, and that are going to work with a variety of different archetypes. So yeah, I think that this set is actually worth it so far. We don't know the TCG and OC exclusives. The ones we do know seem like it's going to make it worth it, like uh, the Miracle Contact, and of course Advanced Dark, which are cards for Crystal Beasts and uh, Neospatians. Uh, or El Materials, if you want to say. Uh, so yeah, those are going to be worth it as well because they're going to actually be in the set for us. So I can't wait to hear what other cards are going to be in there. We're also hearing about another number monster that is a, uh, uh, what is it, an O part or Chronomaly. A C monster that's going to be an OCG import that we're going to get as well. So I can't wait to hear about that. And even a TC exclusive that is all about tribute summoning. So, can't wait to hear about those. We'll have more in-depth videos whenever we hear more about the exclusives and imports. Uh, but I would say for now, the set as it is, it's worth getting. So, I, it's uh, really awesome, and I cannot wait for this to be released in August. And, of course, it's really nice how Excalibur is going to be a cheap and easy card to get. Please tell me what you guys think about this set and all, though. If you think it's worth it, uh, if you're really excited about this set, or if this is one you think you might just pass up and wait for Abyss Rising. So yeah, please tell me in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and please like this video if it helped you out. Share it with your friends so they can learn a little bit more about Return of the Duelist. And I will catch you guys later. Hope you've enjoyed my latest video. Be sure to check out the next and previous buttons that are down below so you can see some of the past and future videos that I've made. And also be sure to check out the two featured videos that are on both sides of me. Thanks again for watching, and be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. Later, guys.